old, and he came from a pack called Longleat. Now, when he arrived, he wasn't trained at all. All he did was swim about, eat fish, and try to bite me. But he soon settled in. After a day or two, we were the best of friends. Do I get a kiss? Mwah, thank you. And he loves lots of attention. He loves fish. These animals feed on fish, squid, eel, and octopus. So when I reward him with fish, he responds very well. When I give him a pat on the back, when I say, well done, good boy, he responds to that attention like a dog does. And he also responds to you guys. If you all stick an arm in the air, give him a wave. He should wave back. That's what we like to see. Give him a wave, Merlin. <laughs> And he also responds when he hears clapping, so if you see him clapping, join in, give him a round of applause. <laughs> now, sea lions are what we call marine mammals. They are, they are mammals just like you and me, but they feed on fish, squid, eel and octopus, so they're well formed for chasing and catching that food. When they swim, they use the front flippers for power. They work together, they act like giant paddles. The back flippers act a bit like the rudder on a boat, helping them to twist and turn when they swim. But all the power comes from these massive front flippers. You can tell he's a sea lion, not a seal, because of those big front flippers. A seal's front flipper only grows to the size of my hand. That's one obvious difference between the animals. People do get these creatures confused. We often hear people coming into the show saying, let's go and see the seals. Well, we don't have any seals today, but we've got sea lions, and that's one way you can tell them apart by looking at the front flippers. The ears also give you a clue. Sea lions have little ear flaps that stick out, seals don't. A seal's ear is just a small hole on the side of the head. But if you can see those ear flaps, you're looking at a sea lion. And they walk in different ways. Watch how Merlin walks about. He walks on all fours. He can run, he can jump, he can climb. He can use the front and back flippers to walk on. The back flippers tuck underneath his body, the front flippers bend in the middle, allowing him to run, jump, and climb. Now he's going to do his impression of a seal for you. He's not a seal, we know that. He doesn't like being called a seal. In fact, he's never met a seal in his life, but he does do a great impression of one. Well, show us how a seal moves. Yeah, it's like this. <laughs> <laughs> These animals can walk about on the flippers easily, no seals can. <laughs> along the western coastline of America. The animals you see on the beaches around Britain are grey seals and common seals, but these sea lions are known as California sea lions, and that's where most of them are found along the California coastline. But they're actually seen as far north as Canada and as far south as the Gulf of Mexico. Ours here were all bred in different zoos. They breed very successfully in zoos. That's one reason we've got an all-male group. If we had any females, within a few years we could be over with baby sea lions. The main reason we've got an all-male or bachelor group is because they're not endangered, they're not threatened. If they were, we'd promote breeding here at the zoo. But they're actually doing fairly well in the wild with an estimated population of around 300,000. Now here we've got to check Merlin's teeth every day. He can't tell us when he's got two fake, so we've got to check the teeth. And the vet likes to check his teeth when he pays a visit. So we taught him to do this. When I touch him on the chin, he opens his mouth and says, Ah! <laughs> So if you teach them to do that from a young age, <laughs> check the teeth is easy. Now they breathe through the mouth, as you've heard, and they breathe through the nose, just like us. They can hold their breath for up to 15 minutes if they need to. Here, they don't need to, there's no reason to. But in the wild, when diving deep to catch fish and squid, they can stay underwater for up to a quarter of an hour on one breath of air. But they commonly suffer from infections in the nose, throat, and lungs. I'm pleased to say we don't have to test them for COVID. But we do have to test them for other bugs or bacteria that can develop into lung infections. So we've taught him to do this. This is disgusting, I'll warn you in advance. But he's trying to blow his nose. When I touch him on the nose... <laughs> That's so we can take a mucus sample which we can send to the lab and have tested. Now uh, Merlin, when relaxed, has nostrils that close. All sea lions and seals have nostrils that shut when they're relaxed, which is very clever. It stops any water going up the nose when they're swimming about. They actually open the nostrils each time they inhale or exhale. Uh, the outer coat, this is fur. They appear very smooth and slippery when wet, but this is a fur coat covering the body. That fur is perfect insulation. It keeps them warm in cold water. When they dry off, which does them no harm at all, they call fluffy, and they feel a bit like a fleece jacket. And around the 
the neck area here, the males develop a slight mane, hence the name sea lion. But that's where the similarity with lions ends. It's all down to the fact that the males develop a mane as to why we call them sea lions. But they're more closely related to bears and otters than they are to lions, and they're much more closely related to dogs. Compared to a dog, they've got a similar bone structure, a similar body shape, they've got a similar sized brain, and therefore a similar level of intelligence. They've got whiskers around the nose, teeth like a dog, and that fur coat. They even bark to communicate. So, very similar. And when you're training a sea lion, it's just like training your dog at home. By training them stuff, not only can we show you what they can do, we're also keeping the animals occupied, no matter how silly or simple an exercise might look. As long as it gives them something to think about, something to focus on, you're preventing the animal from getting bored. It's a big part of our job here. A simple task that you can train any sea lion to do when they're very young is a retrieve. When he was just a pup, we threw these hoops in the water one day, and then I stood here waiting for about six hours while he messed about with them. But eventually he brought a hoop back to me, and the first time he brought a hoop back, he got a pat on the back, a piece of fish. I said, well done, good boy. Hey, presto, you've trained the animal to retrieve. It's that easy. He knows he's going to get a piece of fish and a pat on the back from me for bringing the hoops back. He also knows he's going to get a round of applause from you every time he claps. You guys clapping, you're actually helping me to train the animals. People find this hard to believe, but when you're clapping, I'm often rewarding him at the same time. And he quickly made this link after just a few times out here on the stage. He started to respond whenever he heard clapping. And it becomes another form of positive reinforcement. If they make a mistake, we don't punish them. Punishing the animal, that's no way to treat them. If I was to punish him for any reason, he wouldn't trust me. And trust is really important because they've got sharp teeth. Now, he's going to try catching the hoops, but instead of catching them in his mouth, he's got to catch them over his head. So let's see if he can catch all five hoops. I'm going to stand right over here, throw the hoops to him. He's got to stretch out his long neck to catch them. Are you watching, Merlin? Watch carefully. Now, he can see very well. He's got binocular eyesight, two eyes facing forward like us, so he can judge distance and he can judge speed. He can stretch out the long neck very quickly to make the catch. And if he gets this, a big round of applause. Well, he does make that look very easy, but when we first practiced this with him, he found it quite difficult. At first, the hoops would bounce off his nose, they'd end up on the floor, in the pool, but now they all end up over his head pretty much every time. So we're gonna make this more of a challenge by flipping the hoops. When we flip them, He's got to adjust his head at the very last second to make the catch. So he might not get all five, but as long as he tries his hardest, that's all we ask. Can you concentrate, Merle? You've really got to concentrate here. This is really difficult. There's one. Oh. Adjustment of the head there. Now, for some reason, he always has to look over his shoulder to check he's got the hoop. <laughs> <laughs> because they've just gone over his head. Maybe he hasn't got it. He'll be on the floor or in the pool, but... He always likes to have a little glance just to make sure you've got the lot so far. Can we make it a full house? We can! Yay! Very, very good indeed. I would say those things back. Thank you. So that shows you how good his eye and muscle coordination is. But sea lions have the amazing ability to find fish when they can't see. In the wild, they're one of the rare mammals that can survive in the wild if they go blind. And that's because they can find fish using their whiskers. When a fish swims, it moves its tail from side to side, yeah, like that. <laughs> little waves in the water behind the fish. The whiskers can detect these tiny wave patterns in the water. And if they follow them, it leads them to the fish. The whiskers are so sensitive because each one has a strong nerve at the base, which makes them more sensitive than our fingertips. And that's how they can feel these tiny vibrations in the water using these long, bristly whiskers. Now, here, we're not allowed to feed them live fish. All the fish that we feed Merlin has just been defrosted. So in a zoo, they don't really use the whiskers unless you practice ball balancing. Now to balance the ball, he's learned to use his whiskers to feel which way it's moving. They're not strong enough to hold the ball or move the ball, but they can feel the ball with the whiskers. He could actually do this with his own shoe. He's not watching the ball at all. At first, to try and keep it on his nose, he tried watching which way it was moving. They'll never succeed in balancing if they try watching the ball. But when they learn to use the whiskers to help them, most sea lions learn to balance pretty well, but not all of them. We've got one here called Clive. He'll be out in the pool at the end of the show. He's retired from the shows now. 
He's been practicing balancing for well over 20 years, and he can't do it. He drops it every time, but we don't care because it's kept him occupied trying. People always ask me, how long does it take to train a sea lion? And that's a question you can't answer because they're all different. Like us humans, they all have different skills, all learn at different speeds. No two are the same. We just work at their pace. Well done, Merlin. Good balance. more difficult by flipping the hoops. We can make this more difficult by swapping the ball for the American football. Now when he finally learned to balance a basketball, it took him years to get good at that. We swapped it for this ball and at first it kept toppling one way or the other because he got confusing signals from his whiskers because it was a different shape and kept rolling one way or the other off his nose but now it stays there. But when we turn the ball vertically it becomes a lot harder to balance especially when we ask him to swim at the same time. That's what he's going to try and do now. He's going to swim across the pool, get back onto his stand without dropping the ball. This is probably the most difficult thing he's learned to do in all the years of being here. A lot of concentration and coordination needed to do this. It's still all about the whiskers. Without the whiskers, no sea line would be able to do stuff like this. With those whiskers feeling the ball, he can get across the pool, out of the water without dropping it, and onto the stand without dropping it. That's what it's like. by sharks and killer whales. They're attacked by three types of shark, tiger sharks, bull sharks, and great white sharks feed on these animals. So they always have to be careful in the water. They actually spend most of their life on dry land in the wild, not in the ocean. People always assume they have to be in water or they have to be wet. Not the case at all, it does them no harm to dry off. And when they're on the beach, they can relax because no predators harm them on land. Right, are you ready for this, Merlin? He's gonna show you his flexibility by doing a backwards somersault in the pool. No, you wait over there. <laughs> when I give you the signal, Merlin, you know what you've got to do. He's got to throw his whole body in a, in a loop, head over tail. So he's going for a 360 degree loop in mid-air about here. Don't blink or you'll miss it. Are you ready, Merlin? Three, two, one, go! Yes! <laughs> quite a long time. Uh, Merlin, as we said, he's 17. His best mate, Marvin, who's having the morning off, is 21. Clive, who's retired from the show, is now 27. Uh, in the wild, they live a maximum of 15 to 20 years, but that's a maximum. And it's rare that they live to the age of 15. It's very rare they reach the age of 20 in the wild. But in a zoo like this, they usually reach the age of 20. On occasions, they can reach the age of 30, over 10 years longer than they ever survive in the wild. And the main reason for that is any sharks or killer whales here. But there are many factors that influence the lifespan. Now we've also got a youngster, a new arrival. He joined us 18 months ago from Dublin Zoo. His name is Matteo. He's a complete mischief. And you're going to meet him now. So you've got to wave goodbye to everyone. Give Merlin a clap as he disappears. Yellow spot on the end. And all you do is give 
them a pat on the back and a piece of fish when they touch the yellow spot with their nose. Do that a few times for just five or ten minutes, encouraging them to touch the spot, they start to follow it, slowly at first. So before you know it, they'll follow the target anywhere. So this device becomes a little bit like a lead. If I want him to follow me around the stage, as long as I've got the target in my hand, he's never far behind the yellow spot. If I stop, he should stop. If I change direction, so does he. Now, we've trained him to lay down, so when the vet visits, he will lay down next to him. The vet can stand where I'm standing, and he can examine him all over the body without him becoming nervous or worried. If they're not trained to do this, then the vet's job can be quite difficult. They're not trained at all, they've got to be trapped in a tiny cage so they can get close to the animal. So we just train them all to lay down like that. And because he's laid nice and still, give him a clap. Well done, little man. Quite big for his age, weighing in at 65 kilos. So it takes a lot of effort to leap right out of the pool and touch that ball. If he misses, I want you to give him a clap anyway. And if he hits the target, I want a big cheer because he's very, very pleased with himself when he hits the target. And he loves to hear a cheer from you guys. Now, after the show, hopefully this little man will be posing for pictures. If he misbehaves, it'll be one of the other sea lions. But hopefully Matteo will be posing for photos around there. If you want a photo with him, head out through the gate to the right hand side. Uh, to oh, get yeah. a, a photo with him, you've got to buy a poster first. The posters are five yeah. pounds each, two to choose from. It's fairly cash or with card. And anyone that buys a poster can stand in front of him, take as many photos as you like. You've got to take your own photos, but if you've got your phones or your cameras with you, it's a great photo opportunity. And all the proceeds go directly back to these guys. It all contributes to the sea lions and their never ending fish bills, which are wrapped up at an alarming rate for our lockdown because we've no problem. So we appreciate anyone that buys a poster on the way out. But now it's your turn to try the highball jump. Let's see if you can do it. This is your big moment. This is what you're here to do. I think that ball is a bit too high, but let's give him a countdown from three to one. Are you ready? Three, two, one. Here he comes. It's a big ask. Can he jump that high? Yeah! yeah. <laughs> and that just leaves me to say thank you all so much for coming. I hope you've enjoyed the show. Have a great day here at Flamingo Land from Matteo Merlin and me. Bye bye, take care. See you next time. Well, the you want. I